Hello everyone, I hope you've had a great weekend and in this video we're going to be looking at the process of selected interventions for the Pfeiffer Hospital case study and it is important to read through the course material this week that spans chapters 9 through 14. I understand that's a lot of reading but there are a decent amount of charts and, and things like that to refer to so um, just be familiar with the contents. You can also even reference some of those charts as you're going through this intervention selection process. I will not go over all of the content within these five chapters in the video, which you're probably happy about that, but I'll definitely reference just certain sections for you to be familiar with as you go through the intervention selections. Now, I, um, within the course, you'll be able to notice that there's not a discussion board activity for this week. Instead, you'll be meeting with your groups to complete steps one through three of the intervention selection process. As an individual, as an individual you'll be completing steps four and five. And then also you'll be meeting with your group again for steps six and seven. This all does need to be completed this week, so um, it'll, it'll be important to contact your group, develop a plan as far as when you'll meet and so on. Um, but you don't want to leave it until you know later on this week. Not trying to sound like your mother, but just just so you understand that. So it's important to understand that the intervention selection is a very important part of the performance improvement phase that also includes intervention design, intervention development, and producing a business case. And the HPT model illustrates where the intervention selection is positioned in the performance improvement process. You can see right here on the screen, last week we figured out the cause analysis where you were able to discover some of the why behind some of the gaps, which was the bridge to selecting the interventions. So as you saw within your reading, performance improvement is complex because it involves many uncertainties such as individual human behavior, collective organizational behavior, and the dy dynamics of the internal ex and external environment. We know that almost anything can influence behavior, anywhere from culture, leadership, workspace design, supervision, communication, financial systems, and so on. Also, in turn, an infinite range of performance improvement interventions exist, and creativity and out-of-the-box thinking can help lead to selecting intervention solutions that can match the culture and goals of the organization, which will be important. And it's also important to understand that it's very easy to gravitate to your background and also gravitate to thinking about how you could possibly um, be helped a certain way or maybe even some of your learning style. So it will be important to collaborate with your group and be open to new ideas that can um, serve as interventions for this case study. As you can see, there are three main phases you'll be going through with the intervention selection process, the preliminary stage, survey stage, and the selection stage. So it's important to understand that the preliminary phase sets the stage for selecting interventions. Intervention selection depends on reliable performance and cause analyses. It is essential to have agreement on what the problems are and what causes the problem. So that's why you'll be meeting with, with your group for this. If formal and analyses are are already completed the intervention selection team needs to concur that the findings and recommendations are valid analysis data are powerful resources for decision making so that's why i've continued to talk about the importance of using data to back up some of your thoughts and some of your um, even the gaps and the causes and things like that because that really shows that you're not just going with a gut feeling but it's really um, based upon concrete evidence so if there are multiple problems, it is necessary to rank the problems according to pre-selected criteria. For example, which problem has the most impact on the bottom line? Which problem can be fixed in the shortest time and for the least expenditure of resources? Now, usually the criteria can be developed from the results of the performance analysis, especially the organizational environmental analyses. Um, it's also important to think about if you were to close some of these gaps, which would which of these would close other gaps without even having to um, concentrate on those gaps as well. So determining um, the importance of the gaps is important and that's something that you'll do with your group. So the purpose of the preliminary phase is to focus attention on the performance problem or problems and the 
and the cause or causes rather than the symptoms. Interventions based on symptoms may temporarily improve a situation, but the underlying problem will remain or even come up a little bit later. Um, so in order to make headway and to be effective, it is necessary to select interventions that will alleviate or improve causes of poor performance and benefit both the worker and the organization. So you can see even within this model, step one, step two, and step three, you will work on with your first initial meeting with your group and collaborate and go through these three different steps. So now let's take a look at the survey phase. And the survey phase of the intervention selection process includes steps three through five. And each step requires creativity and a willingness to try new strategies. And during step three, you'll still be with your group and with the team leader or performance improvement practitioner, what they'll do and what you'll do is you'll read through the possible interventions listed on the performance um, support tool 9.1 within your reading and you'll also discuss the possibilities and then you'll see um, during steps four and five of the survey phase each team team member reads the survey descriptors individually and reflects on a maximum of 10 to 15 possible interventions now it's important as you go through steps four and five that each team member relies on personal experience and judgment to independently select potential interventions and also rank them according to pre-selected criteria. And the survey phase should be completed either with a group if you're doing this in the real world or within this assignment, you're gonna be doing this privately and on an individual basis. Um, whichever case, if you're, if you're ever doing this in the future, there should be not any external influences on the process beyond the team members of the intervention selection team. So, you know, you're not listening to other employees that wanna just kind of give you some advice or, or things like that. It, it must be completed with people that are on that intervention selection team. And the reason behind that, it's not that you don't value people's input or anything like that, but it's important to understand that the people that want to give you some advice at this stage of the game have not really done all the other analyses that you've completed with the group or um, don't may not necessarily understand the company's vision and goals and really don't understand the why behind some of the gaps that you've discovered. So they really haven't put in the work or really fully understand like you do at, at this stage of the game. So now let's take a look at the selection phase and the selection phase will require group involvement so you'll meet again to go over steps six and seven. So the survey phase was primarily an individual effort. It is now necessary to come together in the selection phase as a group to make a final um, intervention selections and determine some of the next steps. And it's also important to know that group acceptance and support are necessary in order to make changes in people, processes, or the organization. Group involvement assures that many ideas are included and that any decisions have collaboration and participation from diverse areas and levels of the organization. So you want to think in the future when you're doing this, not just some of the some of the you know higher up stakeholders, but you know people from all different levels of the organization will be important to be a part of this process. Diversity is critical for bringing all the potential issues to the discussion table before implementation. Remember, we even talked about the culture, even in the environment that's within the um, the different departments could definitely have an impact. People's culture, how they grew up could definitely make an impact on people's performance as well. Um, in addition, teams um, team decisions can serve as communication mechanisms so that the entire affected organization feels a sense of participation. So you can think about how if one unit or one department is not represented in this um, HPT model or even selecting some of these interventions, how they can feel left out and how they can be negatively affected by this. So in a real world situation, the team will use brainstorming and multi-voting to select some of the interventions to best resolve the performance problem or potential opportunities. Then the team participates in an action planning activity to plan next steps, um, which will include the selection phase, um, which will scope out action plans and reasonable timelines for implementation and change management. 
So that is an overview of the three different phases, and you'll really want to look more into this week's reading um, and be familiar with pages 200 to 210, as this will also help you help guide you through this process. Now let's take a look at this week's assignment. Once again, it's important to know that you will not have an online discussion like we've had in previous weeks, as you will use the time that was normally devoted to that to meet with your group. And to complete this assignment, you will need all the case study work completed so far. And your assignment is to go through each of these phases and steps and produce one deliverable with your group members, wherein you highlight interventions to improve performance. You will follow the phases and steps in a simplified manner versus what you would do in a real um, HPI context. Now it's important to know that your work will be graded based on your ability to demonstrate how potential solutions address causes and will impact measures. This will partly um, be partly a group grade and partly individual. So you will get all the same score for the deliverable portion itself, but each group member must also submit a separate document with what they suggest for steps four and five in the process. So there are points for this too. So just so you understand, steps one, two, and three will all be the same for your group. Steps four and five, you'll select or you'll submit an individual document that goes along with steps four and five. Also, steps six and seven, that will be the same for your whole group as well. And then you can also see within this document, it says after you have gone through all three phases of the intervention selection process, you will produce a deliverable that includes four main sections. And you can see the four main sections right on the screen. You can also find this within the course. And this one section is really important. It says give evidence from the case study as to explain how the interventions would help the performance of the organization. Finally, describe how the intervention would fit within the organization's mission, vision, values, goals, strategies, and critical issues. So as you move through this document, you'll see the example, an example of how to do this in the Angelica case study. I strongly recommend you use this as your guide to see what detail and what needs to be included within this assignment. And you'll be able to find this by clicking on this part of the course that says case study intervention selection. So this concludes our video. If you have any questions or concerns throughout the week, please feel free to reach out and contact me.